Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody. I hope you guys are having a great uh, holiday weekend. Uh, today's Friday, and we have uh, some, I think, some pretty good information. I think Central Bank has today's talk pretty loudly, uh, but prior, prior to that, the Prime Minister's had some things. We've got a few things to go over, but firstly, hey, everybody, thank you for being with us. Uh, you know, our Patreon and our uh, Discord chat room is phenomenal. Uh, Samson brings all that hard work and data to me to analyze. I get it. And then we bring it into the forum and into the Discord chat room where you can find uh, Sunkiss, Gigi, Pompey Peter, Petra, uh, many different other people, uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful bit of people that come from all over the world. We, I think we're covering about 38 countries. So uh, thank you all around the world for being with us. Um, much appreciated. It, it's a lot of work to keep things focused and um, spot on being as, as close to being spot on as the news will allow us to be. So this particular article was coming from yesterday. The prime minister directs the adoption of the main electronic account branching to uh, settle uh, financial operations. Well, one of the key focuses in this particular one, it says uh, that the transparency and their movement, um, knowing that this account will ensure settlement of transactions on the same working day and increase the government's ability to monitor public money. It says the directives were issued to the Ministry of Finance to adopt this by instructing government institutions or spending units to implement this with banks with their official accounts. So here it is, basically the government is gearing to monitor their public money, where it's coming and going. Um, I, I would imagine that uh, the Kurds are gonna have a hard time with that, but eventually they're gonna probably have to uh, pony up because uh, things have changed, things are gonna change, and the electronic systems, they want accuracy, they have accounting, they have auditing, they have all of that built into these systems, so it's gonna get good. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be phenomenal. Um, let's see, the government's financial advisor reviews the benefits of the decision to liberate selling price of the dollar in money exchanges. So, Mahar Muhammad Saleh, the Prime Minister's advisor, uh, yesterday confirmed that uh, the circularization of the central bank today regarding trading the dollar outside the platform according to supply and demand will provide high flexibility in supply that contributes to market stability. This, this article is, is kind of difficult because some of the uh, translations are, are, are hard to get around, but the bottom line is they're going to try to stabilize the market and move away from the parallel market, the illegal one, and they are doing things um, as such to allow, to allow that to happen. It says that the liberal, liberalizing the operations of buying and selling foreign exchange is not an alternative to the policy of defending price stability and the government's plan to interfere in the stability of a general level of prices. It says the Central Bank of Iraq had issued circulars to licensed banks regarding their share, the sale of the dollar to citizens at the official price yesterday. Uh, it says mediation in buying and selling foreign currency to direct, drive directly from this bank, uh, foreign currency buying and selling window. Uh, they basically are going on, going on with um, the buying and selling of, of uh, of all the products, basically, it says families and natural and legal persons in Iraq are hoarding amounts of cash and currency and outside the banking system amounting to billions of dollars and are subject to phenomena. okay? It says it's a uh, difficulty of disposing of the circulation outside the laws of supply and demand that create the current, uh, currently free exchange rate due to deter deterrent legal controls and that the second is a, diff a significant contraction of the money supply. That's a lot of words. Um, it says liquid foreign currency, while it stopped moving in the form of cash, hoarding, it's immobile and outside the circle of supply. So as you can see, our translations don't seem to uh, flow very well sometimes, but it is what we have. It says basically that this exasperates the exchange rate fluctuations under the influence of a liquidity trap in foreign currency resulting from a, an unexpected positive wealth due to the rise in the value of foreign exchange against the local currency. 
So they're basically stating that they're for liberalizing the climate of dealing in foreign currency and giving it a, a white character will provide high flexibility and supply that contributes to reducing, reducing noise in the secondary exchange market, which provides a flexible supply of foreign exchange that leads to market stability. And it's basically it's being said that they're, it's supported by the government uh, that provides commodity supply and through the official exchange rate. So um, basically what they're saying on this one is that the dollar exchange rates are subject to the forces of supply and demand in the market, which they will be. Uh, you're going to have these guys uh, effectively by their, uh, adding these new uh, other currencies of, around the world at this time. Um, they're going to diminish the, the need for the dollar and therefore it's basically um, going to go away. Uh, the central banks made a statement stating that the dollar exchange rates are subject to the forces of supply and demand in the market. We understand that. It says raise several questions from economists about the reasons that promoted the governor to issue a decision that only recently considered an economic crime. So they've basically are saying that, they, that, that he's kind of, uh, if you remember back in a while back, they, they used the parallel market like it was uh, uh, the normal behavior. And that uh, it had no problems, but the bottom line was all along it was going against the law of the central bank and the parallel market needs to go away because they were just completely, um, I don't know, making nothing but money by stealing. That's basically what it comes down to because it was an economic crime and still is. But this particular case, it's uh, they're going to make some changes to where that uh, they're going after the money that is people have been hoarding. So all those people that are sitting out there on heavy amounts of U.S. currency, if they can't get it into the platform system, uh, they're going to find themselves in a situation of how are we going to get rid of this money? What are we going to do with it? Because they're going to have to put it in the market. And if they put it into the market, into the parallel market, and it becomes saturated, the price goes down. It becomes a problem for them. And so that everybody and their brother is probably going to want to dump their dollars uh, in quickly because this whole new system is changing. Uh, it's pretty profound. And um, that's my interpretation of it. I think it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch because uh, these guys they're not playing games anymore. These new systems are meant for a purpose. Uh, the U.S. Treasury, the Central Bank of Iraq, the U.S. Federal Reserve, they are all uh, working towards uh, going one direction, and that's to uh, enhance the global financial system. And we can see that. Uh, they're saying basically there's no provo there's no point in preventing it, which is the parallel market, because if we do what we do the way that we do it, um, it'll take care of itself. And um, what does it say? The central bank will retreat from the step of preventing the delivery of the dollar remittances to citizens. It says whether dollar circulation will become available and not pursued, and anyone can uh, do banking, um, or that anyone can sell the dollar to anyone willing to buy the dollar, the way they, they put it, anybody that's willing to buy it. Well, they may not be willing to buy it, especially if the dinar is more valuable. Why should they? It, and basically, that's uh, how they're putting it. Um, they're going after that hoarded money that's under people's mattresses and um, on the street, effectively, that uh, if you have it, you better get rid of it. If you don't want to get rid of it, then sit on it. You're not going to make any money doing that. Uh, the parliamentary committee answers, um, Kurdistan is forced to pay the oil and gas. So there's going to be a couple of articles about that today uh, in respect to this. And this one here is basically the Kurdistan region has become forced to submit to the requirements of the next stage, especially regarding the oil and gas law. Given that the law is not specific to the governance for which the federal government is responsible only, but also includes oil that is under the control of the Kurdistan region. Uh, it says if the Kurdistan region wants to improve its relations with the federal government by paying taxes or by exporting oil, it must submit to the oil and gas law. So pressure's up on the Kurds to get uh, things sorted. I think they've got basically agreements that they've talked about. It says now that, uh, you know, in my view, it says the transition away from the dollar is underway. Um, now there's room for a new exchange rate to come because they're going to finalize this oil and gas law at some point, the distribution of um, allocations for the 2023 budget, including their salaries, investment projects, 
are all going to need the same thing. They're going to need it to be able to value that oil and gas law, and just like they're going to need to be able to finish with the 23 budget for the retroactive portion to pay for projects. They're all waiting for the same thing. And uh, I think you all understand that uh, I think it's going to be the uh, exchange rate, the newest one, Article 8 compliant one, that uh, they're focusing in on this. Um, this particular article here, it says that the uh, latest, the central bank circular has dollar trading become available to everyone, is, and that's a question. Uh, basically, it says that uh, uh, economists pointed out the measures were taken in cooperation with the American side for like the, over the last two years. Uh, they say it was put in vain into the, uh, the currency auctions and to do anything with the parallel market effectively. Uh, they're basically stating that um, it was implicit acknowledgement of existence of a parallel market. Of course they talked about that. They talked about it all the time. Even the central bank talked about it, but they didn't do anything about it. It says that it imposes itself on the Iraqi economy and controls it, uh, but there is no point in preventing it. Again, that they're reiterating the fact that um, they're not going to need to do that. It says the central bank will ensure that the dollar does not go to prohibited channels. So in other words, if you're not on the platform, um, you're, you're not going to get dollars legitimately. And it also says that the dollar circulation will become available and not be pursued by anyone. Uh, because anyone can use it, can buy the dollar. So they're just reiterating uh, pretty much the same thing I went over the first time. It says here that despite of the approval of Baghdad and Erbil and uh, Ankara, what is the secret of not resuming oil through the Siam? Basically what they're saying here is that I told you that they're, they're working on this, that they need to get it done. And then th that was yesterday, here today they say, uh, that foreign companies refuse to re resume their work at the present time regarding stopping the work of companies and therefore a new formula must be reached between the Iraqi government and the regional government regarding the work of companies. Uh, it says uh, that the minister who arrived in Erbil a week ago had expected the resumption of oil from the region's oil field within days and last week they said it was going to be last week but it hasn't happened yet. Why? Well, they still need to do the same thing. They need the value of their new exchange rate and uh, they needed to have an agreement that Turkey would be willing to allow that flow, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like everybody's come to that agreement. Uh, obviously, it's the new formula and it is ne it's necessary for them to do that. I think the new formula is obviously not gonna be at 1310 and uh, in relation to the formula that they use. Here it says exporting the region's share will resume via the Turkish port of Siam. So again, today, it says that the uh, Parliamentary Oil Committee confirmed that the imminent resumption of oil exports from the region shared through the Turkish port of Siam. Uh, so their, their focus is uh, on doing this, obviously. So we'll see if they, they get that exchange rate so that they can flow that, flow that oil through there. Yeah, this one here is interesting, is if you guys remember, Tave Sammy wanted to have some accounting things taken care of, and they were going to work weekends until the end of the year to get it sorted, or sooner, right, by, the, by that time. This particular one is the Minister of Labor directs the Departments of the Social Protection Authority to remain in official working hours on Friday and Saturday. Why? Well, they're on a push. they got to push to move things, move things along. Uh, it says that the Social Protection Authority is to remain in, in their official working hours on Friday and Saturday. It goes on to say that Friday and Saturday, uh, the 24th and 25th, today, to complete transactions of those covered by social assistance from the, they call the sixth meal, and its supplement to issue smart cards to them and include them in the upcoming payments. So they're set up for them uh, electronically. They're gearing for all this to happen and they're gonna work overtime to help them do that. And that's for the citizens. It says all governors to facilitate the work of departments and subcommittees on holidays in order to serve the public interest. How Sudani's all been all about it. They're working hard. Tape Sammy's been working hard. Um, Central Bank of Iraq has been even at it talking themselves. So we're gonna see some fascinating stuff. Hopefully um, the, the, the word on the ground is, is that um, change is coming. And that's what we're hearing. So I'm hoping that uh, based off this information, it, it's this information is basically supporting that there's definitely things going on and there would be some chatter on the ground uh, to support that uh, their country is 
putting out public information and if they read it they're going to be able to go yeah this is definitely on the way it says that the parliamentary finance talks about a measure by the central bank uh, which is the only way to stabilize exchange rates uh, here this one it says the central bank has come a long way in its mission to restore market stability and get rid of the dominance of the dollar strengthen the Iraqi dinar and bring it into the line of global commercial transactions. That is huge, in my opinion. I think it's it's phenomenal. And why is that they're talking about bringing the Iraqi dinar, they're strengthening the dinar, and they're going to bring it into the line of global commercial transactions. So here again in Patreon, in our Discord chat room, Samson brought this in this morning, it says the parliamentary finance talks about a measure by the central bank the only way to stabilize exchange rates. That's the article. I would suggest you guys come and read it for yourself and you be the judge. It says the importance of this approach as it is an effective solution and thoughtful strategy to open new horizons that ensure facilitating commercial transaction procedures at various levels. It says we renew our full support for the steps of the Central Bank of Iraq as it moves steadily towards developing real solutions to the crisis. Earlier, the central bank took several measures to increase the number of Iraqi banks, which, which external transfers are available. I believe that was 40 plus um, by opening accounts for them in a number of correspondent banks in a number of countries, especially Jordan and the Emirates. Um, the procedure, the procedures include opening accounts in the Chinese yuan, the Indian rupee, the euro, the UA dirham in order to allow exchange in the currencies of the countries that most uh, export most to Iraq, such as India, China, and the UAE. So those are the three biggies that are in there. Uh, but remember one thing too, um, the dollar is not going to go away completely. It's just the way it's going to be accessible. It's going to have to be through the electronic pro uh, protocols. And just like all these other currencies that they've been talking about, they're going to be on a platform. You get, they're going to have to go through the hoops just like if you wanted to get the dollar, same thing. You, you want the yuan, you want the UAE uh, dirham, you want the rupee, you're going to have to go through the channels just like you would to get the dollar. You're going to have to have credentials. Uh, it, it's phenomenal. And this, is, this last article here is long. Um, it's about, according to legal document, <laughs> it's about five pages, right? And it's um, a big one. There's a couple of them. There's a shorter version of it, but I chose to take this one because it, it has so much detail. But the article that's out, you guys go and find it. You can find it in our Patreon. We had it early. Uh, you can see it in Discord. Uh, and then I'm going to go over it now. But there, it's called Al Alak. There will be blockade operations for each category that will put pressure on the cash dollar in the market. And so he goes on to say that the U.S. Treasury and the Federal Bank, Federal Reserve, he says, al uh, in an interview today, uh, the Central Bank of Iraq is in constant communication with the U.S. Treasury and with the U.S. Federal Bank. And the communication continues permanently. So the United States, and U.S. Fed, and CBI of Iraq, right? Uh, it says the communication continues permanently and there are quarterly meetings that are going to be held. So they're not going anywhere. And uh, for those that think that they will, uh, and some of the negative stuff that's out there today, uh, just you really got to focus in on, uh, I think, follow the money as, a far, as, as, as opposed to some of the politics. And because some of the politics come from those that uh, aren't in support of uh, us, for instance. But hey, we know that we've always known it. There's a meeting that will be held at the beginning of next month as part of the periodic quarterly meetings held between the Central Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank, and the Ministry of the Treasury, where in these meetings we will review all matters with emphasis and focus on the issue of regulating external transfer in a way that ensures the safety of the financial system. Remember back uh, when al-Sudani was at the UN Assembly? They talked about the confidence of the Iraqi dinar to support the global financial system. We started this whole conversation out today about Com, uh, global commercial dealings with what? The dinar, strengthening the dinar. And here again, this is al Alak talking about similar situation. What are they going to do? There's developments that have taken place that are radical. 
I mean, the language they've been using, remember the Bank of International Settlements? They were talking about um, extreme uh, financial conditions, complex, I'm sorry, complex financial conditions. Uh, they were talking about shocks that would come. This was like, what, uh, a week ago, this last third, a week ago, uh, yesterday, prior to the BIS was talking, right? So they even go on to say that there's going to be meetings in the Emirata city of Dubai, pointing out that there are quarterly meetings in addition to they have a, they have a setup for that if in case of emergency there's organizational meetings or communications that can be done via phone or video right so for this a lot to tell you that they have things in place to be able to deal with what's going to change they can get, get on the phone they can they can do a video session and they can help facilitate whatever they whatever the developments that they're doing that are taking place that are so radical uh, look going from 1310 to say for instance one to one would be a radical situation if that's what they do I'm just giving it as an example it says that the uh, Central Bank of Iraq and the Federal Bank um, they exist with these procedural processes confirming the development of a plan to shift the external process from the electronic platform which was the the auctions that will be completed at the beginning of next year so we, they've already told us that the dollar is going away effectively when it comes to significant trade because in all the commercial aspects um, inside the country of Iraq is going to be done in dinar right so they, they're just making sure that people um, understand that relationships it says they're creating new relationships between Iraqi banks and internationally accredited correspondent banks abroad. So if you guys pay attention, I think what I'm gonna to try to do is I have some work that's being uh, done that will talk about just how far along and what a, a accreditation that uh, Iraq has. Because what that means is that they have the ability to do things, they are qualified, they have the, the credentials to be able to facilitate, like they're saying. They, uh, commercial um, global finance they can do all that and I'll there's like three or four articles that we will probably try to do on Sunday so if you guys are around on Sunday afternoon we'll, we'll talk about that stuff it's gonna take me some time to get to it but here we go it goes we have greatly su succeeded in this context and we were op able to open more than 40 accounts for Iraqi banks with correspondent banks abroad diversifying currencies and stating that to increase flexibility and facilitation in the external transfer process we've diversified and we have diversified currencies in which transfers are made abroad we have transfers in addition to the dollar the euro and the uae down so they basically are talking about not only do they have those but they're working with the turkish banks as well now, those are neighboring countries doing a lot of trade. I wouldn't be surprised if we see stuff that comes from the, even a closer neighbor, uh, but they haven't mentioned it in this particular article. It says a federal bank wants to reach, uh, reach with us the desired goal, which is to have a relationship between Iraq banks and correspondent banks. Look, that's direct banking. So, ba so basically, the CBI has been taking care of all the dollar auctions and doing all certain things to keep trade flowing. Now it's basically they've set up accounts specifically for trading outside the dinar, outside the country with dinar and other other um, international currencies. So the implication is is that Iraq's going to be similar to them because there are most of these currencies that I can see if not all of them have article 8 compliance with the IMF. And back to the accreditation stuff that we're going to get to. Um, they're working with the World Bank Iraq has the uh, facilities that they need to be able to do all the things that they're going to be going to uh, uh, facilitate international trade. It says this is happening for the first time by opening this number of accounts for our banks and it's a very important step to strengthening the banking system in Iraq because accepting these bank means that they now have systems capable of being accepted internationally, right? Like I said, they have to be. They have to have their credibility. They have. They've. They've got it. They've got um, the systems that are capable of being accepted internationally. It says any correspondent bank currently accepts 
um, by opening an account with Iraq Bank after ensuring the bank has the necessary systems, standards, conditions, and rules under which it operates. In other words, they've got all that. It's This is huge. When they say that the end of the electro electronic platform, in this particular case, I believe that it's ending the auctions as we know them, um, and they're going to be doing things differently. And I think this is why a lot of the uh, parallel market people, uh, the politicians, uh, maybe some of the tribesmen, some of those other people are having such blowback and they don't want this. And you can see it that it's in the news. Um, they're, they're being forced out and uh, it's going to be a big chatter. It's coming quickly. This will lead to the end of the work of electronic platform in the year 2024. So again, the dollar's going by a guy. It says we've reached an advanced level and with the completion of other episodes, we will leave this method. We're going we're gonna to leave it. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. It says in this case, operations will be faster, easier, more disciplined because these internationally accredited, like I said, accreditation, right? Correspondent banks have complete systems for conducting audit and monitoring operations before implementing this operation. So in other words, just to get in this, they have to meet all this criteria. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but this thing is just, you know, it's a, it's a mind blower, right? It goes on to say that um, it's going to reduce the rejected transfers and there's plenty of stuff in here that you could go, I won't get into every single bit of it because like I said, it was five pages. It says the fact that American side is reducing the amount of the dollars. He stated that the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury are responding to all requests related to the process of providing strength in the dollar that Iraq needs following sound rules and standards for the movement of money. So they're just basically reiterating what I've said is that they are uh, going to do it legitimately. Okay, there's still going to be a need for dollars, but not illegal dollars. It says that this is this is in the interest of these two countries, the United States and Iraq, of ridding the financial system of suspicious operations such as money laundering operations, and they've been working on that for a long period of time. And that this new system is looking to be the system that will probably uh, do exactly that. It says our goal is that all banks must have correspondent banks, like we just mentioned. We emphasized this years ago. Of course, they have. They've been talking about it for a long period of time. It says that the banks, uh, the bank does not have correspondent banks, cannot outweigh a bank that does not have correspondent banks, cannot carry out its real work, and is cut off from the world. So there you go. It's locking down those that aren't involved properly. And that's where uh, you're going to see all those people with that hoarded cash um, try to get rid of it. And interestingly enough, uh, too much supply on the market creates a problem for them. Uh, in other words, they're not going to get as much money for their uh, their dollars anymore. It's because the, the dinar is expected to be stronger. It's going to be awesome. It says here that, um, let's see, all banks, correspondent banks believe that this system required to control the movement of funds, provide conditions, follow international standards, and the presence of monitoring system on the issue of money laundering and terrorist financing will enter this field. Uh, again, they're just basically stating the same thing is that uh, it, it's the, basically the parallel market will be going away. It says some banks have begun seeking the assistance of specialized international companies. Of course they will because they're going to need to know that how they're going to be qualified to do so. They're, they're, they need to get on board and so they, so they can become qualified. Um, the government basically issued a decision to uh, deal in dar uh, dollars locally, not to deal, sorry. The government issued a decision not to deal in dollars locally. Again, I've said the same thing, is that they're going to do the dinar. Um, it says there is uh, some types of contracts, okay, that have obligations with foreign currencies, and previously they will continue to be dealt in dollars because of the nature of the beast, if it, if it have to be. And it says we're studying other cases to develop the best and most um, appropriate method for that. And that's really the gist of it all is that they have a method now to be able to, to handle those contracts and they're going to work. It's going to be in a, kind of an organic situation. But it says in the past, uh, inward transfers that's incoming did not matter because the beneficiary was be basically being given dinars, right? Well, now, because of the price difference, 
the difference, the price difference that they're talking about is coming is a temporary solution and we're working to solve the problem radically. So they know that there's going to be big changes. This is the second time that we talked about the word radical and uh, we also talked about price differences. Uh, it says a supply of dollars from abroad comes from what is in the accounts of Iraq banks abroad. Um, it goes in uh, basically stating that there's cash, there's benefits, including the amounts to come in the country instead of abroad. So they're going to be talking about there's going to be some differences in the valuations of, of, of the currencies and they need, they're addressing yeah. that. Here it says the central bank's instructions will not allow the bank to keep a large amount of foreign currency abroad as there are certain percentages in addition to preventing misuse of this currency coming into the country. So they've got rules, they're making warnings. Um, he's pointing out that because of the price differences, there was pressure on banks to withdraw their balances or transfers received from the dollar, which led to some banks becoming scarce in currency. And they go um, on to say that explaining the foreign currency can be available more than one way, not only through the central bank. And basically going to say, as, as, quote, as long as our Iraqi banks have balances abroad in foreign currencies, it's better for us to enter them and this supports the reserves in the central bank. That is, instead of the bank using foreign currency reserves, the currency will be available from the bank's accounts, and that is important. So in other words, they're not gonna be bleeding out their foreign currencies uh, anymore, and they'll be having those that foreign currency on their balance sheets in the future. And uh, it's effectively you know, talking in a past tense when they say because of the price differences, it's like, Wow, did something already happen and we just haven't been told about it? Uh, we all know that they have 40 banks plus accounts, so they, they did that. That's a past tense situation. And uh, lastly, all I'm going to say to finish this up is that Al Alak confirmed that, quote, there's a broad reform plan for private banks with mergers and correction operations and, and some other situations. And there is a broad plan for government banks, some of, which, some of whose details will be announced. So he's got more stuff coming towards us. And we're working with the Prime Minister, uh, Shia al-Sudani. And he's pointing out that the government banks represents the greatest weight in the banking sector. And we must uh, put it in the best possible way or uh, use it to the best they can. I think it's phenomenal, phenomenal data, you guys, that it came out this uh, on this Friday. And um, I would absorb this, this article and understand that um, they're making radical moves. Th their perspective is that if they have an emergency, they can take care of it. They've created the correspondent banks to be able to do trade uh, globally, uh, global commercial transactions. Uh, are, it sounds like they're, they're geared for, our, for our Iraq to have uh, full compliance with Article 8 and the IMF. So, Let's see if they uh, follow through with it. That's the way I see what they're telling us in the news. So thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Uh, it's a Friday. And uh, for all those new folks, if you like my work, uh, hit the like button. And if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. And we also have um, the venue to uh, support our work to keep this content going We're using Venmo and the uh, PayPal and Zelle. So thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated, as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.